Hello, everybody. Welcome to FFM, and we're glad to have Tia Brooks here with us today. Um, I'm Rod Detweiler, part of the staff here at Firm Foundations, and I'm fortunate to be able to bring the message today. And when I saw the message, which is titled Cold Love, that Pastor Don has in his series of baggage, I was excited because I knew right away that I wanted to have Tia and Austin to give their testimonies today because I think they're the perfect examples of that. So, Tia, thanks for coming and being part of this. Um, we just wanted to uh, talk a little bit before you get into your testimony about how it was when you grew up because I know all of us grew up in families that aren't perfect and uh, and you've already told us that was the case in your family too so that's not a surprise and while we don't want to make light of anything that happened in anybody's family we recognize that part of growing in Christ's love is to recognize that sometimes we need to rethink some of the things that we learned as we grew up so Tell us a little bit about what some of the things were like as you grew up in your family, some of the things that you've had to rethink as you learned to walk in Christ's love. What kind of things um, do you recognize have been a part of your baggage as you've uh, grown in your love with Christ? Well, as a child, I just thought I had a normal childhood. I thought that parents, um, parents argued and being raised in a bar was normal. I thought sure. that it was okay, I thought that um, my, I, th I thought all dads bought your love, and um, as long as he was giving you things, that, that meant he loved you. Sure, I understand. Anything else that you recognize now as you walk in your relationship with Christ that you had to rethink from your growing up years? Yeah, I had to rethink pretty much everything. I had to rethink communication, um, sharing my feelings. I had to relearn how to love pretty much I didn't I didn't know how to I didn't know how to express it how to communicate it in any way sure. well you've had a number of people from FFM to uh, pour into your lives you and Austin as a couple and so um, obviously there's been a group effort to kind of help you guys uh, focus your your walk with Christ and over the last couple of years you've made huge strides I think from what I've observed in your walk with Christ and your relationship with Austin. So just give us some some uh, of your testimony here and tell us a little bit about how you've come to uh, recognize things needed to be different in your life. Well, I learned to build up walls early in life. Um, I built them very thick and very tall. Uh, I never felt worthy of love at all. Um, I thought that being in a relationship was just, always one-sided. You never really got what you wanted out of it. I thought um, being married or being in love was um, sleeping in separate bedrooms and never um, showing affection of any kind. So I had to relearn how to do all of that at a very young age. Sure. Awesome. Well, what else can you share with us? Um, well, I... I met Austin, and I was head over, head over heels for him, and then I got pregnant, and that's when it all began. I, at 17, I had to learn to grow up. Um, looking on the past 12 years of our relationship, I collected a lot of moments, um, but the moments that you don't see are the moments that hurt you, the moments that make you mad, the moments that make you want to punch him in the face kind of thing. Sure, I understand. There's a... Uh Good and bad in every marriage, yeah. but, yeah, hopefully the good starts overcoming the bad. Absolutely. Uh, Austin and I married after um, we had our third child. We were still very young, still having dreams and goals of our own. Um, and I guess at the time we didn't realize that our dreams and goals were very, very different. My dream was to be happy. That's it, just to be happy. And to be honest, I can't really tell you what Austin's dreams or goals were. Um, however, I knew that I had married my father, an alcoholic, and I was my mother, the enabler. Jesus was never our main focus. He was a blurry vision of what our mar of what married couples were, but it wasn't Austin or I. Um, growing up, I thought love was hard, draining. There was arguing, and it never really went your way. So I guess that meant I loved Austin. Yep, I understand that. You're, uh, you're, um... Role model is what you think your life will be like, 
Right, but that's that's what we can change because uh, with Christ we can change anything in our lives. Right, yeah. So um, when I first started to trust Austin, I, I trusted him with, with everything I had. And he hurt me and he broke me. And the Lord was not our main focus. So I turned to be angry, never sharing my feelings, never communicating, and numbing the pain. Numbing the pain became precious to me. I, at the time, I had a prescription for painkillers for my migraines. But as the pain became deeper and deeper, um, I started to take the painkillers to numb my pain, to numb my thoughts and my fears and my emotions. Um, I should actually be dead. Not wanting to feel became addictive. It became dangerous, and it opened up a very dark and dangerous world that I was very, very comfortable in. Um, when the pain was so unbearable, I allowed myself to take up to 30 pills a day. I wasn't thinking. I That was the last thing I wanted to do was think. I didn't want to have to think about anything. Yeah, instead of dealing with the pain, it's sometimes easier to make it go away. Yeah, exactly. And I really didn't think that Austin cared if I did share my feelings or my thoughts. Um, but he did care, Obviously. or at least he started to. Yeah. Um, I remember standing in our kitchen one time and him shaking me, telling me, I can't stand to see you this way anymore. And I didn't care. I blamed him for for my depression, and I blamed him for our for our problems. So sharing and caring were not on the top of my list at all. Yeah, it's something we got to learn and something we have to practice um, through people that help us that, that know how to communicate better and how to yeah. be a better wife, how to be a better husband. Yep. Um, about a year ago, though, is when all of the problems, all of the moments, the walls, the heartache started to drift down. And I'd be lying if I said I wasn't scared. I wanted to to hang on to the the baggage because I would have to... It's all you know sometimes. Yeah, I, I would have to confront all of the problems. Yep. And that was the last thing I wanted to do. I didn't want to surrender to Jesus because it was hard. Yep. So Anything new is difficult and hard. Yeah. So... Um, So I had to stop numbing the pain. I had to stop relying on the painkillers to be the answer. But as always, God had other plans. We had wrestled with God for a long time. I never really blamed him, but I always wanted to know why. Why did it take so long or why did it go this way? Why was I afraid? And um, the answer was and always has been that Tia didn't know how to be married, and Tia didn't know how to love. So, It's a group effort, but ultimately you got to change yourself before you guys can operate as a team. So yeah, that's part of finding out what true love is. Yeah. Um, looking at it now, I realize that actually it's freeing that I, didn't, I don't know how to be married and I don't know how to love because I have to rely on my Savior to 100% show me the way. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. Anything else you want to share? Um, no. Great. Thanks so much for being here and being part of this. We appreciate who you guys are and who you are as a person. And thanks for sharing with us on our series here on Cold Love. You're welcome.